Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Beruchim Abayim, everybody, Tiskul Shanim Rabot. Today, Wednesday, the ninth day of Nisan, corresponding to the 17th of April. Today's class, graciously sponsored by Ezra Zuri Ati and family, Le'ilui Nishmat, his beloved grandmother, Rachel. Bad Vida Alea Shalom. Additionally, by Mr. Ernest Maslaton Tarava Kohen, Le'ilui Nishmat David Ben Miriam. Additionally, by Yaakov Kobi Cohen for the Refua Shelema of Esther Bat Mazal, as well as Heleni Orna Bathen Hana Tsipora Bat Marinel among the Holim of Am Israel. So, with your permission, I'd like to continue with a fascinating topic that we started to discuss yesterday about the idea of matzot during the Yom Tov of Pesach. So according to my collection, we came across to how the seder of Pesach in a way represents the marriage between Hashem and Am Israel. And we discussed the lineup of the Berachot. So with your permission today, I'd like to explain a bit about the Seder of Pesach. And Be'ezat Hashem will try to cover some ideas of the Seder. So it says the following. We know that Adam and Hava were created on the sixth day of the creation. On that very same day, they sinned. And they were ev evicted from Gan Eden, the way the Pasuk writes. Interesting enough, the Pasuk writes in Sefer Bereshit, by Garish et Ha'adam. Girushin has two meanings. Literally meaning is divorce, divorce, or eviction. Basically the same concept. So it says as follows. When a person acts in a way which is not suitable to be middabek, to be bonding with a kadosh baruch Hu, if there is no bonding, means that there is distance. I don't feel comfortable that there are more people standing than sitting. Please, knock on the door. Tell them to bring chairs. Gentlemen, you're welcome to sit next to me. You don't have to pay a premium today. And the video camera doesn't target you. Perdón, que Juan Carlos o William me traigan 15 sillas ahora. Por favor. Sandra, por favor, thank you so much. That's a benefit of speaking Spanish as well. All right? In, only in America and only at the Safra Synagogue. I don't think the other two rabbis of the Safra Synagogues up north speak Spanish, although today, you know, people are multilingual, especially when it comes to uh, service in the home. But let's go very quickly. And it says the Midrash Rabbah, that a Kadosh Baruch Hu Natan lo get piturin. Behayad no ke isha megureshet. When the Torah writes, by garish et ha Adam, divorce from Abraham, from Adam rather, who divorce Adam Arishon? Usually, who gives the get? The husband gives the get to the wife. Hasve shalom. Don't try this at home. God forbid, unless they are real reasons or halachic situations that God forbid may, may prompt that matter. But it says, and Adam Arishon became like a wife being divorced from the husband when the Pasuk rise by Garish Eta Adam. But there is another concept in the Torah called Mahazir Gerushato, returning your divorcee. This is a mitzvah from when certain halachic parameters aren't being met. Husband and wife that were divorced, they are allowed to remarry each other. Some of the minimum requirement is, number one, 
that the husband is not a Kohen. If he's a Kohen, he's not allowed to marry a divorcee. So that is a one-way ticket if the husband is a Kohen. Number two, in the case that the wife was married to someone else, in other words, she got married to husband number one, got divorced from husband number one, she got married to husband number two, whatever happens to husband number two, departed or divorced, she cannot make a U-turn and go back to husband number one. That's what the Pasuk says. But in the case of Adam and Hava, that we're talking about first marriage, and we're talking about the concept of the creation, it says how is a Kadosh Baruch Hu fulfills, or how rather we fulfill the Mizvah of Mahazir Gerushato through the power of Teshuvah. This is also found in the Mo'ed Kol Hai, I believe Rabbi Haim Falachi writes this topic in the month of Elul, and it says, Mizvata Teshuvah Ke'en Mahazir Gerushato. When a person returns to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's like a divorced couple got divorced, a couple got divorced, and they were able to remarry. And therefore, it says, the same happens in the case of Pesach. It says, even, I'm going to read you the Lashon, even it's possible, Nikshal Ha'adam, that occasionally somebody has a, a challenge, a spiritual challenge. And that person separated, so to speak, spiritually from the Almighty, Kovah Lela Seder, the night of the Seder of Pesach, through the consumption of Matzah, La Hazor el Mekor Ulavo Bebrit Hanisuin. The person is able to take upon himself the commitment of marriage. Bekirbat Adam Arishon Kode Mahet. To the level of Adam before sinning. Obviously, this may be too heavy and too deep for all of us because you're telling me that comes the night of Pesach and I press a button, the reset button, and I'm going back to zero? The answer is yes. We're going to come across later on the concept of being two halves of the year in the same calendar year. One half it's called from Rosh Hashanah till Pesach. That's called the first period. The second period of the year is from Pesach till Rosh Hashanah. And this gift, and is a gift that we have because it's sending us the message that a person is not stuck in life. Sometimes people are stuck in life. Now, when we say the word stock, what does it mean? Not that you're buying a stock. What does it mean? I can move. I'm stuck in traffic. That's basically the way that we use. So many times, the person is stuck in their own traffic, in their own mazal, in their own surroundings, in their own situations. So I saw this written a year ago. I will come across, hopefully, later on, in Hola Moed, or even during the holiday, in the classes, that it says that Akadosh Baruch Hu, when it comes to Pesach, put, turns the page of whatever it was decreed in Rosh Hashanah. Whatever is happening till Rosh Pesach, okay, we're still dealing with the decree then. When Pesach comes, we begin a new chapter, and this chapter has the power to become greater now, what happened between Rosh Hashanah and Pesach goes further. The Rokeah writes that a person who eats matzah properly in Pesach becomes a partner with a Kadosh Baruch Hu in the creation of the world. Now, what does it mean? And becoming a partner with God Hashem, when it comes to the creation of the world, the world was created 5,784 years ago and changed. Yes and no. 
Yes, the foundation of the world was created that day, Bereshit, but the reality is, is part of our daily prayers that says, Amehadesh betubo becholiom tamid se Bereshit. I'm so happy that everybody is so familiar with this pasuk. Wonderful. What does it mean, this verse? We'll translate for the benefit of everybody. That renews in his goodness every day the creation of the world. Meaning to say, what is in the world today is not guaranteed that it's going to be tomorrow. And not because it was yesterday, it means that automatically will be today. And if it is today, and if it's the day of tomorrow and the day after, it's only out of Hashem's constant supervision in the essence of the existence of the world. But the question is, where the Lokeah is able to bring me suddenly Pesach to Maaseh Bereshit? Bereshit was the creation of the world, the creation of mankind. Pesach was more towards the Jewish people. But he brings a very interesting hidush in the creation of the world. Omechila, let me go back. When it comes to the mitzvah of matzot, the pasuk writes, Shivat yamim masot tochelu. Another pasuk says, Tochal masot. The Torah connects masot to the seven days. Where else in the Torah we find seven days? In a few cases, for example, now, Perashat Azriah, Perashat Tahor, we talk about the purification process, Perashat Paraduma, but it says also, the Pasuk that says, Shivat Hayamim, refers also to the seven days of the creation of the world. Even though, even though that on the seventh day, there was no really creation, but we write, but we call it the week of the creation of the world. So it says, Shivat Hayamim Behe Hayedi'a. Sometimes the Torah adds an extra He in a word. It's trying to highlight, it's like you use a cap letter in a word, right? The moment that you put a cap letter in a word, you're trying to give like a certain kavod or a certain essence to the word and the pasuk writes shivat hayamim the he connects to the week of the creation of the world now let's explain this maybe a bit deeper right here just one second let me just see if i found this source in front of me okay we know it says here, very interesting, from this Mah Moshe, the Pasuk says as follows. It's a very interesting concept coming from David Melech, Alav Shalom. I'll get to David Melech in a minute. But here explains the following. So far, we discuss yesterday and the day before how Shabbat Agadol it's like Shabbat Shuba, correct? Then we discuss how the seder of the Pesach, seder eating of the matzah, we're not even touching the seder of Pesach. I have a lot of goodies for the seder of Pesach, but we're not there yet. Then we discuss how the mitzvah of matzah enters the physical body of the person, fulfills the pasuk that says, your Torah is inside of my intestines. This refers how the matzah enters the body of the person and brings a benefit to the body and to the soul. Then we discuss uh, the concept of the shiva berachot that the hatan and the kala get under the chupa are connected to the seven berachot that we say in the night of Pesach in the beginning of the seder. And then we spoke about how Pesach, it's like a Kadosh Baruch Hu, is renewing the vow with Am Israel, and how Pesach is connected to Bereshit. Now we're going to connect Pesach with Rosh Hashanah. What happens in Rosh Hashanah? Yom Adin, correct? Day of judgment for mankind. 
not only for the Jewish people. The Zohar Kadosh writes that the first line of judgment is for the Jewish people and then goes to the rest of the world. And the reason why he's done that is to bring more benefit to the world. That's a different topic, but I'm just opening the statement with Rosh Hashanah. On the day of Rosh Hashanah, in the afternoon of Rosh Hashanah, there is a powerful prayer called Tashlich. Betashlich bimsulot yam kol hatotan, the famous pasuk from Micha, Mikel Kamocha, in which we go to the water, in our case, Baruch Hashem, we go literally to the water, right right there, we go to the water, we do the tashlich, and we do the special prayers, and the, there is it's written that the person symbolically empty the packets, which they usually are empty in Yom Tov, we don't carry any mukse. But nevertheless, a symbolic fashion that I'm releasing whatever is in my packet, etc. Now, the concept of water is a very fascinating concept. Why? Because whenever it comes for us to do matzot, to bake matzot, there is a mandatory component or ingredient, I should say, in the matzah. The matzah is what? How do you make matzot? Water and flour. So let's talk a minute on the water of the matzah. Can you use any water for matzot? No. Sure, it needs to be clean water, purified water, filter water, all of the hidurim. But there is to be, it needs to have one more requirement. You cannot just open the faucet and take water for the matzah. You need to collect the water from the day before. The water needs to sleep overnight to come down from the traveling to the piping system and the different changes of temperature because based on the water temperature, and the weather conditions, it can affect the baking process. You like that, Shaul? That's the difference between New York bagels and Florida bagels. You understand now? You understand the difference in flavor of bagels? That is, by the way, one of the main reasons. Because the water in New York is freezing cold. Correct? Here in Florida, the water is warm. That's a huge difference in the baking process. So the same thing, anyone knows what is, how do you call the water of Pesach Matzah? I see a couple of yeshiva students. Anybody knows? Aha. Maim Lo. Maim Shelanu. Or Maim Shelanu, you can say it. That's the name of the halachic term for the water. Shelanu means hours. Shelanu, that they slept overnight. Right. Lina, lina means from sleeping. So you collect the water, you put it in containers, and then you let it sit. The next morning, when they come to bake the matzot, so the water is in a stabilized temperature. Because if it's not, other can delay the process or the opposite. If it's hot, it's going to expedite, it's going to be too cold, it's going to delay it, and then you cross the line on the minutes of the baking. So it needs to be this way. Now, so far, now we understand the water. Now, the water, it comes, okay, from the rivers. Let's step, take a step back on that. And I like to read a deep, this is deep. I'm giving you the heads up. Beautiful, but very deep. Comes David Melech, chapter 137 of Tehillim. Al Naharot Babel, Sham Yashavnu, Gambachinu, Bezochrenu, Et Sion. This is the Pasuk of Tehillim that says, on the river banks of Babel, Sham Yashavnu, there we settled, Gam Bachinu, we also cried, Bezochrenu et Sion, by remembering Yerushalayim, 
remembering the Beta Mikdash. Yani David Amelech in the book of Tehillim is telling us advanced news. What is telling us? Eventually, we're going to go to Babel, we're going to cry, we're going to settle. Okay? Imagine yourself if you know what's going to be the Powerball number for when when do they pray play you pray to pay to pay tonight okay let's say that you know the numbers and you're going to buy it okay remember if you do what you need to do so right away it says the beta haim as we understand this pasuk is talking about when the jewish people will go and cry for the destruction of the Beta Mikdash. And here is the question. If we know that this is coming, why are we going to cry when, after it happened? Prevent the tragedy. Let's say that you are a prophet and you see that someone is going to do something and puts their life in danger. And you know this is coming. Wouldn't you tell the person, do me a favor, don't go to that place today? So then why the Pasuk of Tehillim is telling me in advance, by the way, build the Beta Mikdash, it's going to get destroyed, you're going to travel to Babylon, you're going to cry by the riverbanks. What difference where do I cry? I cannot cry in my home. I cannot cry in my car. I have to be by the water to cry. And listen to the question from the Beta Haim. It says, Gam bachinu. We also cried. What's also? So comes the Ismah Israel. And it says, A fascinating Hidush. We discussed this topic once in the time of Sukkot. We quoted the Pasuk in Sefer Bereshit that discusses how in the creation of the world the waters were separated. Maim Elyonim, Maim Tahtonim. All the waters came from Shamaim, from the heavens. Hence the name Shamaim, Sham Maim. Waters were separated. A group of water were tall down to the world the group of waters that went down were not happy they felt evicted can you relate to that imagine somebody comes and starts giving a gift to every person and then suddenly they skip you how are you going to feel not good that's how the water felt the water felt evicted from Shemaim, they wanted to be close to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Goes further and he brings the following from the Zohar Kadosh, and it says, Bochin, the waters started to cry, and they said, We're gonna be, we want to be close to Akadosh Baruch Hu. We want to be next to the Shekhinah. What did Akadosh Baruch Hu do? Kedele He says to the waters, Don't worry. You and I are connected forever because I need you in the world. For what? The waters ask God. It says, I need you for two things. I need you for Nisu Hamaim. I need you for the pouring of the water in the Mizbeah in the celebration of Sukkot. And then I need salt. We learned this topic a few weeks ago on Shabbat night. The concept of the salt and the bread on the Shabbat table. We're not going to discuss this now. But I do need to speak about a minute to the salt. The salt, when it was created, literally was not a happy camper. And it says to the Almighty, what's the purpose of my creation? I'm at the, at the bottom of the ocean. God says, don't worry. I need you in every korban. The perasha says, al kol korbanecha takriv melach. Every offering has salt. 
And then the salt asks the Almighty, what's going to be after there is no Bet HaMikdash? God says, don't worry. You're going to be a permanent fixture in the table of the Jewish people. Shabbat and holidays that we dip the bread in the salt. And if you eat bread during the week, you should also dip it in the salt. This is how Hashem appeased the salt. What about the water? Do you know how you make salt? From water. The salt comes from the water at the bottom. It's a mineral. You pick up the water with the salt. You boil it, I believe. I don't know exactly if boiling is the proper process. And if I made a mistake in the word, I accept. Hatati, aviti, pashati. All right? But the process is basically that the water, thank you, Professor, the water evaporates and the residue of the water is the salt. So you pick it up, you don't see it, but then the evaporation process causes the separation. So in a way, what happens with the waters that were at the bottom, they evaporate. What does the meaning evaporation? The water goes up, and the leftover of that container is salt. Okay, so far so good? Beautiful. And it says that the water was given, but, but, once the Beta Mikdash was destroyed, and there was no korbanot, and there was no water libation in the Mizbeach, the waters, they went back and they started to cry. That's what it says. What they said, Anan, we, they said, Bayan le meheve, we want to be Kodam Malka in front of the Almighty, Uba'an le Silka le Ela. We want to climb up again. By the way, I believe this is attributed to the Gaon of Vilna, and it says that when you see in the ocean, waves that are climbing up this is the desire of those waters to climb up to the Mayim Elyonim sure science calls it the circulation of the air the oxygen the underground forces of the water that is wonderful for science but from a spiritual perspective he says that's the nature of the water the water wants to go up and therefore, who was crying, really? Naharot Babel Bochin. The waters of Babel, when they were receiving the Jewish people coming from exile, they said, Uli, the Beta Mikdash was destroyed. So we stuck here forever now. And that's why the Pasuk says, Gam Bachinu. We also cried. So if I say, we also cried, means that somebody else is crying, correct? If I say we also cry, I also want. If I say I also want, it means that you have something that I want. So when the Pasuk says we also cried, so who is the we? Who is the also? Who is crying? The waters and the Jewish people. Goes further. And when the Jewish people saw this, they said, if the waters for being evicted from the heavenly spheres to fulfill a holy mission in the water, Netila, etc., they cry, how much more we need to cry for the destruction of the Beta Mikdash. And therefore it says, and now comes a fascinating Hiddush, and it says, it is impossible to bake matzot without water. So it says, you know what happens now? The waters experience sasim besemechim besimhani fla'a. It says, when we bake the matzot, we are giving happiness to the water. 
that the water doesn't feel evicted without any purpose. Without water, we have no masot. And this is the consolation given to the water that they are connected the water through the mitzvah of baking and consuming matzot they feel how do we say this rewarded despite the initial painful moment and it says we really don't see the this happiness of the water but it says the following there were certain sadikim who understood this in a very deep way but here is the statement if the waters are happy on the zechut that they became partners in the mitzvah of the matzot for the night of pesach which is a food a food Imagine yourself how happy this ka'ak is now. Say goodbye, because this is it. Tomorrow comes Kashele Pesach breakfast. Whatever we have, don't ask for delicacies. Whatever we have, we're providing. How happy is that ka'ak? Bring the ka'ak to me. How are you today? <laughs> now, why do I say how happy? the kaak feels how can the kaak be happy the kaak has feelings i'm going to tell you what's happening in the mind of the kaak exactly what we we'll are learning today on the water the factory who manufacture kaak let's say did 500 pounds of kaak from 500 pounds this kaak was selected to come to the Safra Synagogue. But not only come to the Safra Synagogue, he was in the rabbi's class. Somebody else could have bought the same kak in another kosher store, kosher supermarket, ate it, no beracha rishona, no beracha harona, God forbid. So how do you feel, the, how do you think the kak feels? Neglected. True. How do you think this kak feels? Each kak 101. The neshama. Didn't we say this in Birkat Ha'ilanot the other day? That when we say the blessing of the trees, what kavanah do we have? In the event that their souls reincarnated in that level of the creation, let it be the zechut of the beracha, it causes the neshama to elevate it. So when we say a beracha, to food, we are achieving that spiritual move. So if the waters have the feelings, why can I say that the flower has the feeling? Which, by the way, if you look in the Sefer, I have it next to me. It's called Zach Benaki, a Sefer that there explains why there is so much emphasis in making the matzot with wheat specifically there are all kinds of matzot today you have spelt you have oat you have wheat it says that when we make hamosi on bread made out of wheat we are making the tikkun of adam and hava we're repairing the sin of adam and hava and he explains the reason why because in hebrew how do you call wheat? Hita. Why is hita called hita? Het. Sin. That's one of the four opinions in the Gemara. What was actually the sin of Adam and Hava? One opinion says a trog, wine, bread, and figs. These are the four opinions. So every time we eat the bread on Shabbat, that's what the Benish High brings. Or every time we eat the matzah in Pesach, made out of wheat, we are fixing Adam and Hava's shortcomings. So yes, food has something. Otherwise, will not be edible. 
because if it's edible, has a godly element. If it's not edible, has no element. It's like a chair. We discussed this a few weeks ago. Chair belongs to the creation level domain, inanimate objects. There is a level of godliness, which is not as revealed as something that flourishes, grows, an animal or humans. But there is a godly element, otherwise it will not be a matter. You understand? Good morning. Goes further and it says, so if this is how the matzah and the waters feels, how much we need to feel on the opportunity that we have of getting closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. But here he says a fascinating Hidush. It says that when a person eats the matzah in Pesach, the body was upgraded. It's called Hefsa Shel Mizvah. I'm going to bring a, 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 an example that is not a pleasant example, but I think that is the easiest way to understand what I'm going to say next. Remember how many times, especially during COVID and after, uh, words started to become more common in our uh, vocabulary. For example, virus, right? COVID, uh, virus carriers, isolation, quarantine, right? Those were the words that suddenly were part in history in the dictionary and suddenly became part of our daily vocabulary. So when it comes to sometimes medical conditions, a person can be a carrier, a carrier. Now, there are many different types of carriers. You can be carrier air conditioning brand name. That's one. Then you can be a carrier that carries on a luggage. You can be a carrier of forbidden substances. Don't try this at all. That forbid. Or has shalom the person can be a carrier of a virus. There is such a thing, correct? So guess what? You can be a carrier of a mitzvah that is inside of your body, not outside, because a lot of the mitzvot that we do are external. For example, mezuzah, external. Talet, tefillin, sedaka external masa is internal because i'm carrying the masa in my body i'm eating the matzah so once it says here that once the masa enters the body my entire body suddenly became a mitzvah carrier you have you understand I said Beracha before. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let me see. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to go five more minutes with your permission. Thank you. Baruch Hashem, today we are blessed to have a huge variety when it comes to matzot for Pesach. You go to the store, you don't know which matzah to buy. You have no idea how many times I'm getting lately, is this matzah acceptable, that matzah, this matzah, Baruch Hashem, we are happy to say that overall, the matzot come with good, reliable supervision. And today is much easier than even 10 years ago that you had a handful of matzot bakeries. 
you have now Matsot manufacture in the Ukraine. True. Somebody said to me yesterday, I didn't ask him permission if I can tell who he is. He says, Rabbi, I'm sending you a package of Matsot made in the Ukraine. I'll let you know how were they. Most of the Matsot in my home are today from Israel and Montreal, Canada. And I think two pounds uh, from Brooklyn as well. And, you know, we try different matzot to see which one is the one that we like and enjoy the best. But the halacha, true. We're not talking about machine matzah. Talking about handmade. Because machine matzah, it's a different flavor altogether. Correct? Now, the halacha writes that the ideal matzah for the seder should be matzah shemura. Abodat Yad, the handmade matzah. Why? For many reasons. First of all, there is a concept of the kavana in the misvah. When you go to a matzah bakery, I'm not talking about machine, because there is no kavana in a machine. I'm talking about in a handmade matzah. If you ever go to visit a bakery, you hear something that they say. Leshem matzah mitzvah. I'm baking this matzot for the sake of performing the mitzvah. Remember, eating matzah in Pesach is a positive commandment from the Torah. And therefore, the Lacha writes that it's ideal that for the seder of Pesach, the person should have the handmade matzah. Although machine is shemura and comes with good supervision, you can have that. During the day, for after the meal, after the main meal, etc. But ideal for the seder, masa shemura by hand. And today you have extra thin, whole wheat, white flour. Uh, what else you have? Spelt oats, thick matza, thin matza. There is another matza called soft matza. I don't eat. I don't eat that because I never saw it in my life till I came to America. In South America, we only ate matzah by, by hand, whatever. So you need to follow. First of all, you need to make sure that comes with a good supervision. Number one, like all the matzot. But also, I think you need to follow. Somebody was explaining to me a while back the proper way of warming it up before you eat it, etc. I repeat, I don't know much about it, but I do know that uh, they have in Brooklyn and in Baltimore with a good, excellent uh, ashgaha, I believe. But bottom line for us, those of us who are in Florida, you know, there's plenty of good opportunities and options when it comes to the masa. And I believe that after we discuss for the past two, three days, all the many hidden elements which are relevant to the matzah and how much the matzah, as I mentioned the other day, matzah de Zora Kadosh calls it michla de asuta, michla de meminuta, the bread that heals and the bread that brings emunah to the person. So imagine how many things we are connected to. One more thing that he writes here, and it says that the, he quotes the Gemara in Masechet uh, Yoma that discusses the concept of uh, Teshuvah. So it says the following. The Gemara writes in Masechet Yoma the different parameters of Teshuvah. Correct? And Teshuvah has the power to really give the person a new identity in Abodat Hashem, etc. And it says that there are two times of the year, another Hidush, the concept of Teshuvah. One is Teshuvah Meira, and the other one is called Teshuvah Me'ahava. Teshuvah Meira means, literally, I do Teshuvah out of fear. That protocol usually happens 
סליחות, רושנה, כיפור. That's fear. But it says, interesting, and it's on a quote the Hatam Sofer soon, that says that when Pesach comes, that we remove the Hames. We already know that the Hames is what? The Yeserara. So in a way, Pesach and Teshuvah goes together because the Matzah represents the Yeserara Tov. The bread represents the Yeserara. The matzah is thin, humble, humility. The bread is thick, representing the concept of ga'ava. So right away, I understand that there is a teshuvah protocol when it comes to Pesach. I can add one more thing with your permission. That even in the cashering methods, even in the cashering methods, there is a spiritual correlation between Tevila, Hagala, Irui, Libun. These are different methods of cashering, dipping the, the, the dishes in hot water, the concept of uh, boiling the, 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 the water, and then you dip the dishes, that's called Hagala, then the Libun with the blowtorch, then you have they're taking the new dishes of silverware to the mikveh. So there are different steps that a person activates in order to cashierize something. I'll tell you one short example. Everybody, since we're talking about Pesach, everyone remembers Moshe Rabbeinu. Remember him? Alava Shalom. What happened with Moshe Rabbeinu? He was saved by the water, correct? He was in the water. He was saved by Batia. We all know the story. If not, listen to the recording on Perashat Shemot and you'll get the information. What happens in the beginning of Sefer Shemot when the Torah tells us that who nurses Moshe Rabbeinu? His mother. Okay? But what happens later on? Moshe Rabbeinu is with Paro as a baby. And suddenly Moshe Rabbeinu removes or touches the crown of the king. So what happens with Paro and the people surrounding him? What they are afraid of? That maybe he's going to take over the kingdom. So what was done at the end? Remember? What happened? He was put into a test. They put in front of Moshe Rabbeinu two shiny objects. One side contained gold, and the other side, what did they contain? Correct, had coals. Both of them were shining. Moshe Rabbeinu is about to touch the gold. The Malach comes, pushes the hands, touches the burning coals, what does Moshe Rabbeinu do afterwards? Why? Short answer. To make libun to his tongue. To cashierize his tongue. Why? Short answer. Because before Moshe Rabbeinu was nursed by his mother, the Egyptians attempted to nurse Moshe. And Moshe did not nurse. Why not? Hashem is going to communicate with Moshe. And Moshe is going to be fed by Halav Akum or Halav Ishmael. No, Moshe Rabbeinu only drank Halav Israel. I'm not kidding you. From his mother. And today, Halav Israel is easy. We have it. Accessible. But we're not talking about this topic today. So, how did Moshe Rabbeinu cashierize his mouth that touch non-kosher or Jewish body parts? Through a gala. 
our rabbi tells us that in the kashering process of vessels, there are messages of how each step can help the person to do teshuvah. And that's why the Hatam Sofer says at the end, Pesach is the time that we do teshuvah vesimha with joy, not with the fear of judgment, but actually with the joy of what? Of being part of Am Israel. And every year, we sit around the seder table with our families, with our friends, and we do the beautiful seder. Each one follows their traditions, etc. And it's a night that carries a tremendous amount of power and blessings, not only for the night of Pesach, but for the remaining six months of the calendar. And that's why it's called seder. What's the meaning of seder? Order. You know, like you get up in the morning, you don't get dressed and then you take a shower, right? First you take a shower, then you get dressed. You don't put on your socks after your shoes. You put first your socks, then your shoes. You put on the shirt, then you put your tie, if you wear a tie. You understand? So there is a seder. But guess what? Even in the seder, there is maror. Even in the seder, in the order, one of the steps is called maror. What's the meaning of the word maror? The bitter herbs. Right? Even life occasionally has bitterness. But when you mix it with the haroset, the bitterness means the challenges of life. That's what it means. And there are many, many, how do I say this? Many deep Kabbalistic concepts in the seder. Beli Nether will try between tomorrow and Sunday to cover a few steps. Uh, I'm not going to go really through halachic topics because Baruch Hashem, I'm sure that every person uh, gets the guides, gets the magazines, gets the daily halacha, goes to the classes of classes that we had already. So Be'ezat Hashem, feel free to reach out with questions if you need to. Otherwise, actually, go to your local rabbi, okay? If you happen to be in Florida, then you can contact me. This way, I don't want to take away from the, the zehud that many of the wonderful rabbis elsewhere have in the answering questions. But in a more serious note, we're going to really never try to concentrate on the deeper meaning of the seder. Because at the end of the day, the halachic protocols of the seder don't change from year to year. The four cups of wine are four cups. The maror is the maror. The three matzot are the three matzot. Since I believe that we are all familiar with the basic halachic protocols of the seder, we'll discuss the deeper meaning behind each step of the seder, and that will help us to have a true meaningful seder and overall Yom Tov of Pesach. This cool is Shanim Rabot, everybody. Thank you. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen be Amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia